I think I'm gonna name him Kevin. Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Andrew Foster, and today I'm talking about if you need dysphoria to be trans. Last week, I made a video on trans trenders, and I asked you guys if there was any other topics related to the LGBT community, sort of hot topics or controversial topics that you wanted to hear my opinions on, and someone asked me to talk about if you need dysphoria to be trans. In this video, I'm not gonna be focusing on what dysphoria is, but if you need it to be transgender. To give you guys a little bit of background, I am a a binary trans man. I came out at 12. I started medically transitioning at 17, which was three years ago. I'm 20 now. That was a little redundant. I'm sure you guys can add 17 plus three. And I do experience social and body dysphoria. How I sort of conceptualize dysphoria in my head, it is the feeling and moments where and when I feel a disconnect between the gender I was assigned at birth being female, and my true gender identity, which is male. So throughout my life, this has shown up when I get mispronounced, or I get called my birth name, or I see parts of my body that to me feel very feminine or look very feminine. Before I had top surgery, I had crippling dysphoria surrounding my chest. Now that I've had top surgery, my body dysphoria has sort of moved to different parts of my body. My dysphoria surrounding my chest was crippling, and now my dysphoria is sort of, it's always there, but it's not nearly as bad. I'd also like to point out that I do pass probably 98% of the time. Now that I'm on testosterone and I present in a very heteronormative masculine way, I don't get a lot of flack from within the community about like being trans enough. So I do recognize my privilege there in both passing and how I'm seen within the trans community. Before I really dive into my opinions about this topic, I wanna say that I am just one voice of the trans community. These are just my opinions, these are not facts. And if you disagree with me, that is perfectly okay. That doesn't make your or my opinions or identity any more or less valid. And also feel free to start a conversation in the comments if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, it's perfectly fine. I'd love to hear your opinion. It's hard for me to understand a scenario where someone could identify as transgender or come out as transgender and had never experienced any type of dysphoria. Because for me, the reason that I came out, the reason that I felt I had to transition, and the reason I made the decision to transition was because of my dysphoria. Now, I'm not going to police anyone's identity, and if someone's says that they identify as trans and they've never experienced dysphoria, I'm not gonna tell them they're not trans. That being said, no one has been able to explain to me how you can be trans without having dysphoria. From where I'm standing, it seems that if you do not have dysphoria and you come out as trans and you start to transition, you're making a decision to be trans. I didn't make the decision to be trans, I was just trans. And the reason I knew I was trans was because I had dysphoria. I had social dysphoria surrounding how I was being perceived, the pronouns that people referred to me as, the feminine name that I was being called, and also just the way I was being socialized. I knew that I was much more comfortable being socialized male, and it felt a lot more natural when I was in male spaces. The moment I started puberty, I was overcome with a sense of dysphoria, and I really had a hard time connecting my mind to my body. And because that wasn't something really anyone was talking about in the media or in my school or in my family or in my friend groups or anything, like it was not something that I had ever heard of. I felt very, very alone in my dysphoria. You can watch my How I Knew I Was Trans video to find out how I knew I was trans. But as soon as I found out that I was trans or that that was even, you know, a thing, I knew that I was not alone in 
my experience of dysphoria. If I didn't have social or body dysphoria, I wouldn't have transitioned because if I was comfortable in my body as a female body and I was comfortable being perceived and presenting female, then why would I transition? You know, being trans and transitioning, it's not easy and it's not cool. And so it's hard for me to understand a scenario where someone would even want to transition without feeling like they had to because of dysphoria. My opinion is you need dysphoria to be trans, but how that shows up for one person might be completely different from how it shows up for another person. Some people might hate their chest, but not their waist, or have bottom dysphoria, but feel fine with their jawline. Some people might cringe every time they hear a female pronoun, but not necessarily associate their name with their assigned gender, and so not have dysphoria around their name. I talked about this in my trans trenders video, but I think any type of identity policing is harmful for the individuals involved and also the community. And so I'm never gonna tell someone that they're not trans because of any reason, but otherwise it seems to me that you're just making a decision. And in my point of view, being trans is anything but a decision. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave me a comment question, or concern. Let me know what your view on this topic is. And if you want to see more from me in the future, then subscribe. Stay sweet.